Hello and welcome to the new TMUX series here on Learn Linux TV. I'm having a ton of fun producing this series for you guys as normal. I just love creating Linux content. So make sure that you subscribe to Learn Linux TV because there's no shortage of Linux content where this came from. There's all kinds of things coming. But I'm getting ahead of myself yet again. We're learning TMUX right now, not predicting the future. So what do I have in store for you guys today? Well, what we're going to do in this video is learn how to manage sessions within TMUX. It's going to be a ton of fun. Now, before we get into that though, I need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for this particular video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. Thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive back into TMUX here for episode number four. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's take a look at session management. And you know what? We kind of already looked at this a little bit. I mean, we did create sessions in TMUX, disconnect or detach from those sessions, and then reattach to those sessions. So we've been working with sessions within TMUX, but we haven't done a whole lot with it either. So what we're going to do is learn even more about session management in TMUX. Now, one of the commands that I gave you earlier in the series was this one right here, TMUX and then list hyphen sessions. That's going to give you a list of all the TMUX sessions that you have open. Right now I don't have any open, so what I'll do is create one. And to do that, I can simply type tmux just like that and press enter. And there you go, I have a new session. Even inside of tmux itself, we can still run tmux list sessions. It doesn't matter if we're using tmux or not, that command still works. And we see the session right here that we're currently working with. So what I'll do is just detach from that particular session. And what I'll do is create another one by typing, you guessed it, tmux. Now when I run that same command again, we have two. So I'll start another one. But hold on, not so fast. You shouldn't run tmux nested inside of tmux. Yes, you can do that. I'm not going to cover how to do that. It's going to be something that you'll need to pay special attention to. If you do want to nest sessions, like the verbiage says right here, you're going to need to do so with care because that's a little complicated. So what we'll do instead is just disconnect and I'll start yet another session. And now when I list sessions, we have three of those listed right here. It even tells me which one I'm currently connected to. Now things are starting to get a little messy. Up until now, we've only ever been working with one session at a time and now we have three. If I was to disconnect from this session right here, and then I'll list the sessions yet again, we have the same three, now what's going to happen when I run tmux attach? As I mentioned earlier, this command here will reattach me to whichever session I was most recently using. In this case, it's going to be the third one. So I'll press enter. Now notice how the third session in the list now says attached. That's the one that I'm currently using. But what if I didn't want to attach to the one that I was using more recently? What if I wanted to attach to session number one, for example? How would I go about doing that? Well, one way we could do that is to disconnect yet again. We'll list the sessions just to make sure. And we have the same three. So here's what we'll do. We'll type tmux and then attach, followed by dash t for target. And then we could type the name of the session that we want to reattach to. In this case, I want to attach to the middle one, number one in this case. 
we see that all the way on the left, so I'll use that as the identifier for reattaching to that particular session. And now I am reattached to that session right here. And we can see that I'm right because attached is listed for the middle session. So we're able to choose which one we want to attach to at any given time. And again, to do that, we type tmux attach just like that, dash t for target, followed by the number, whichever one we want. Now the next thing that I want to point out right now is that some of the commands that we've been using can actually be simplified. For example, tmux list sessions will list the sessions that we have open in the background. We already knew that. However, we can simplify that command down to just tmux ls, just like that. And for me, ls is a lot easier to remember. It's short for list sessions, but it's also very similar to the ls command on Linux itself, which is something that Linux users remember first. So tmux ls will list sessions, the same as tmux list sessions will list sessions, but tmux ls is the abbreviated form of that same command. Now also, we can simplify the tmux attach command. Instead of attach, we can lower that down to tmux a just like that, and that's a lot easier to type. So tmux a will do the exact same thing as tmux attach. Now it's not going to let me do that right now because I am already connected to a session at the moment, but let's just disconnect from that. And I'll just drop this down to tmux a like I mentioned. And it brings me right back into the session that I was most recently connected to. Now similarly, we can also add dash t to tmux a as well. There's no difference here. We are just using the abbreviated version. So for all intents and purposes, how we use tmux attach or tmux a is exactly the same. So I'll attach to session number one, and there we go. I'm now attached to that session. But you know what? I'm still not satisfied. I mean, we're learning quite a bit here about session management, but in my opinion, we could do a better job when it comes to organizing our session. And here's some of the ways that we could do that. Now I've already showed you how to rename a window. Again, we can send the prefix and then type comma, and we just give it a new name, just like that. I'll create a new one. We'll send the prefix followed by C for create. We're going to rename this one right here by sending prefix followed by comma, and then I'll name it second. For dramatic purposes, what I'll do is just activate htop right here in this first window, just to give us something to refer back to, something running, if you will. That's the only reason why I'm doing that. And now we were able to rename our windows here in the session, but the problem, we have three sessions and they're not named very well. Yes, we named the windows inside the session that we're currently using. However, we would probably do well to rename sessions themselves so that way we know why each one exists in the first place. And well, here's how you go about doing that. What you'll do is attach to the session that you want to rename, whichever one that happens to be. We'll type tmux. Let me clear the screen here. So anyway, we'll type tmux, and then I'll add rename session just like that. And that'll help me rename the session that I'm currently attached to. I'll just call it my hyphen session. And we can see that the name changed down on the lower left. There were too many characters, so the name is truncated a bit, but you get the point. I was able to rename the session. If I run tmux ls again, we can see my session is listed right there. So let's disconnect from this one. Let's connect to session zero. So I'll type tmux a dash t for target and then session zero. And now I'm connected to that session. Also, what I'll do, just like before, I'll type tmux and then rename session. And I'll call this, well, Linux, I guess. I'm just making up a random name. I need to name it something for this example. I think that's good enough to prove my point anyway. And now we have a session named Linux. And we see that one right there in the output of tmux ls. Let's disconnect again. Let's see which sessions we have. And again, these are the sessions that we're working with. And this time I'm going to connect to the second session. And just like before, I'm going to rename this one as well. So what I'll do again is type tmux and then rename. Wait, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you an easier way. So to rename a session, this is my preferred method, we'll send the prefix, and then we'll type a dollar sign symbol. 
And that brings up a dialog right there that gives us an opportunity to immediately rename the session. And I'll just call this one work. I guess that's good enough. And now we have renamed each of the sessions. So again, tmux and then rename session, followed by the session name, whatever you want to call it. That will help you rename the session. But the easier way to do it, in my opinion, is to send the prefix followed by typing a dollar sign. And now we get an opportunity to rename our session that way. And that's my preferred method. That's the way that I always do it. It doesn't matter which one you prefer. You could use tmux and then rename session, or you could send the prefix followed by dollar sign, whatever one you find easier. But now you know how to rename sessions. Now, another thing that I want to show you guys is that you don't have to disconnect from tmux every time you want to switch sessions. Check this out. And this is really, really cool. I'm going to send the prefix yet again. I'm going to type S for session. That brings me to a list of sessions similar to how we saw the output in tmux ls, we see that at the top, but if I press the up arrow here, I've highlighted another session and another one. So the up and down arrows allows me to choose a session. And what's really cool about this, you see a preview as you scroll through the open sessions that you have. So within tmux, you send the prefix key, control B by default, and then you type S for session and you get this menu right here. What you'll do is select the session that you want to connect to or switch to. And once you've selected it, you press enter and there you go. So again, we'll send the prefix, S for session, I'll go back up here to the top and so on. And why is this something that you might want to consider doing? Well, let's look at a more realistic yet still hypothetical example. So I'll send the prefix and then dollar sign. I'm going to rename the session. And what I'll do is name the session client one. Maybe I'm working with a specific client. So all of their stuff that I'm working on for them is going to be in this particular session right here. And now we see the session name has indeed changed to client one. We see that at the bottom left. Let's go back to our session list. And then I'll select this one right here. Again, I'll send the prefix, dollar sign. Let's change the name. I'll change it to client two. And now the sessions are starting to make a lot more sense. I have client one, client two, and work. So if I wanted to switch in between those particular projects, and yes, I use sessions as projects, which is my preferred way of using tmux, I could switch between the sessions that I have open without losing my place within each. And that's a very good way of using tmux because you can better keep track of what you're working on by categorizing your workloads into sessions. Now we've gone over most of the basics so far. In the next video, things are going to get a lot more exciting. We're going to customize tmux and it's going to be a lot of fun. But for now, what I recommend that you do before you move on to that video is practice everything that we've gone over so far. Definitely practice sending the prefix key, creating splits like horizontal splits, vertical splits, things like that. Create sessions, switch between sessions, rename sessions, rename windows, you get the idea. Just make sure that you have a handle on everything that we've covered so far and, well, you'll be ready to move on to the final video in the series. And there you go. Episode number four is all set. We've worked through four episodes in the series already and there's only one episode remaining. Can you believe that? But here's the thing. The fifth episode, the final episode, is going to be my personal favorite because in that episode, I'm going to teach you guys how to make tmux your own. We're going to customize the heck out of tmux and it's going to be a ton of fun. So whenever you're ready, I'll meet you over in that video.